Hello, this is Koto Tsuzaki working for NTT, one of the telecom companies in Japan. I'm working at the research and development division of NTT Holdings and mostly working on the area of distributed systems and storage. I'm also working on other open source communities like OpenStack and the Contribute Object Story System, Swift project, as a co commit maintenance. Okay, so this is our presentation for some user group meeting 2022 titled as Bust Buffer Lua Plugin for Last Apache System. Thank you, some community, for giving us the opportunity to introduce the product Bust Buffer Lua for Last. This presentation is prepared by my coworkers. So let me introduce first, Rikiman san, please. Hi, I'm Rikiman Honjo. I am working at NTT Technocross Corporation. I am mostly working on the area of cloud virtualization and related open source software. OK, thanks, Rikiman san. He will give you more detailed technology later in this presentation. So get it started since the next slide. At first, let me present a brief summary of our situation, especially as the position of the system researcher. Although NTT is a telecom company, the demand for AI research has been increasing in the recent years. We have 13 individual robots and more than 2,300 employees are working on various technical areas, including network, media, of course, the software and system. To satisfy the computing environment for the researchers, we developed strong based cluster for AI research at 2017, mostly training perspective. That has provided the cost effective computational resources to our researchers and the environment benefits to publish several papers to the world, mostly in the AI field, at least at 2021. However, as you know, the recent growing of AI business all over the world is amazingly increasing. Due to the expansion of the technology and market, our cluster are also required to expand the cluster scale. That was including both the number of GPUs and the storage capacity. So we have had to address to their requirements. In addition to that, the number of the cluster users was increasing. The first deployment in 2017 is starting from the 60 terabyte NFS storage. The cluster equipped around 32 GPUs. The number of users were less than a half hundred. However, in the last few years, we have had to manage more than 100 GPUs and a half petabyte storage capacity in the clusters. At this time, one of the most difficult problems is the storage architecture how to provide their massive data in the fast way. To resolve the scaling problem, on the storage perspective, we decided to use a scaling distributed file system rather than NFS. It's a Lustre file system that has been developed in open source community. Lustre is one of the most common open source file system used in a lot of high performance computing clusters. It provides POLIX compatible interface to user applications. Lasta is capable. It, uh, sorry, Lasta is capable to extend the capacity logically up to exabytes, and many site reports introduce they manage petabyte scale Lasta file system in production. Lasta also provides capability of the distributed systems on its metadata and the actual data stored in. The clients of each compute node in the cluster can access the specific servers to store, then fetch the data from the node individually for scale. Furthermore. Recently, the Lustre community is actively developing new features for the performance scalability. Persistent client cache is a feature to achieve the efficient storage access from the compute node. It's a feature of the Lustre client, and it provides transparent access to the file in the Lustre. And also, it's caching the file into the local high-speed storage, such as the NVMe in the compute node. With the persistent current cache, the cluster users don't have to move any dataset into a local device by hand. They can use just the raster file system as well as POSIX file system, or if they want to fetch the data explicitly, they can also call the raster command to fetch their data into the prepared device of raster persistent current cache. Once raster cache is the file into the local device, 
users can read the file from the cache device. The file can be handled as two modes, read, write, and read only. However, in the native raster persistent client cache, the cache should be controlled by users or it sacrifices the first time penalty on the transfer to the local device. To resolve the explicit overhead, we plan the Sorry, we plan to accelerate the data transfer via the SRAM workload managers feature called Bust Buffer Rule Generics. Okay, for the detail of Bust Buffer and our plugin design, let me take over the presenters to Nikimaru san. Come on, Nikimaru san. Hi, uh, Bust Buffer is a feature to fetch the job data to high speed storage before running the job. If Massive job data is fetched when the job runs. A lot of time will be wasted to fetching data. This is an inefficient use case of compute node. Burst buffer solves this issue by prefetch. Uh, there are two burst buffer plugins in current SRAM. Data Warp plugin and Lua plugin. The Data Warp plugin is for the Data Warp data warp products only. On the other hand, the Lua plugin has a generic interface. It was added in SRAM version 21.8. Users can integrate variant storage with SRAM by custom Lua scripts. The Lua plugin has a capability to adapt custom script for each job state. This table is a list of job states that can run any functions. We developed a Lua script which integrates raster persistent client cache with SRAM. I explain the design of our script in the next slide. We developed this Lua script as open source ecosystem. The pip package name is LFSCCM, Raster File System Client Cache Manager. This package contains three files. Burst Buffer Lua is a custom script for the Lua plugin. LFSCCM is a command to manage Raster clients on each compute node. LFSCCMConf is a configuration file of LFSCCM. You can install LFSCCM by pip command on SRAM control nodes. And you just set node name and persistent client cache ID to LFSCCMConf. LFSCCMConf's schema is similar to SRAMConf. You can use burst buffer just by writing PCC directives to job scripts. Files specified in PCC directives are fetched to persistent client cache on compute nodes before running job. This figure is a sample of job flows. NVMe on the compute node is used for persistent client cache in this environment. Let's check the flows. Job 1 doesn't specify PCC directives. Job 2 specifies a PCC directives. In job 1, the job data is fetched when the job 1 runs. In job 2, SRAM control D kicks burst buffer Lua before the job 2 runs. Burst buffer Lua runs LFSCCM command to cache job 2 data in persistent client cache. As a result, the job 2 can use the job data with high throughput and save time to fetch job data. OK. This is the overview of our script. Thanks, Ikimasa, for your explanation for the detailed design of the Bust Buffer plugin. From here, I'd like to show a sample demo of our Bust Buffer plugin. OK, here is a virtual machine generated on the Lima project tool, and we already deployed the Rasta and SRAM into the virtual machine. In this MacBook, I already launched the CentOS 8 as a VM. With the prefix Lima Control Shell Raster, we can run any Linux command in the VM. Like here, type SE4, 
you can see the sum filters like this. Cluster as info. All right, you can see the cluster. And then let's control show node lima dash raster shows the current VM setting here. Now control scale raster is control and show node equal lima raster. Yes. Yeah. You can see the environment. And also we can see the install raster button like lima control shell raster and control raster build version. Okay, we got uh, 2.14 for raster. Okay, it's working. I also deployed our bust plugin already, the bust buffer plugin already. Then I'd like to show the JavaScript to submit is here at buster vm sample JavaScript. Okay, so it's just a sample job for Bust Buffer demo. The job wants to fetch the MNT raster sample file into the cache via raster fashion to current cache. Then show the content of the file and the raster status into the result file. Okay, let me submit the bus job to, uh, to SRAM. In my control, the uh, raster bash. Dash oh sorry. Start at all without Okay, it's uh, it is queued into the SRAM queue. Okay, we can confirm the some status this queue. Okay. Um, wait. So the no waiting job found. So we can check the standard that file specified in the commands. Lima control shell roster bash dash he cat is out. Oh, yes. So, uh, excellent. We can see both of the contents and the state of the last buffer. As you can see, what user can, sorry, uh, as you can see, what users have to do is specifying the PCC directive as they want. Then SRAM and Raster automatically place the file into the local device for caching while waiting the job allocated. I believe it's pretty easy to use for the cluster users. Okay. Then finished successfully. So take the next slide. I describe some analysis for bust buffer efficiency. There. This is a small benchmarking we had in the actual hardware. The graph is the network I/O in our raster file system printed via graph and dashboard. The horizontal line is the time scale, and the vertical line is the amount of transport data. The benchmark is from our actual researcher. She wrote down the learning script for large scale gun training. As you can see, the upper graph shows only one peak dead transfer at the starting point. It's a chicken shell read from Rasta to the local cache. No extra IO from the Rasta found during the training because all the all data sets were already cached in the passionate current cache via bus buffer mechanism. Compared with the upper graph, the lower graph shows the constant traffic from the raster exit. This means the job had to read the file continuously during the training. As shown in this slide, our bus buffer enabled efficient caching in the cluster as expected. So this means the bus buffer is now ready to use the upstream community. However, this has currently some limitation due to the functional reception of dependent OSS. The first item is from the raster limitation. The current US stable raster supports only read write modes. Since the raster 2.16, read only mode would be available, and the 2.16 release is now targeted to the next year. So on, 
the current agency system will fail if users specify the read-only mode in the PCC directive in their job. The second one is related to the first one. Currently, surround burst buffer Lua generics doesn't support the way to emit a specific message to user client or user standard output without failing. It means, unfortunately, we had the difficult this technical decision on the current implementation that the burst buffer should reject the job immediately when invalid config or unexpected directive is specified. Even if the SRAM administrator would love to allow to run, we cannot choose any options. If we have the way to push the message like warning without pay, we could implement the burst buffer as configurable if admin wants to allow to run the unsupported burst buffer jobs with the warning message. Like as the limitation, our project still has some ongoing work so if you are interested in this project, you can try it from GitHub repository as shown in the slide. Thanks, Didier, for hosting the project. And also, you can set up your test environment as described in the slide. You can see any sample configuration and test environment with directly here. And feel free to ask anything and issues features in the GitHub project. Any contribution is welcome for us. This is a summary of this presentation. We described the SRAM burst buffer supports effective caching mechanism for cluster scaling. The LFCCM project enables this burst buffer capability with really easy deployment. And it can be executed in native SRAM and Luster upstream software. So you can try it anytime if you are interested in. All right, we've reached out the, to the final side. Thanks for coming. We hope the LFSCCM fast buffer for Rasta helps your work more. Thank you, some committee staff, for letting us to present this. Thank you.